So today I'm going to talk about all the classes, class types and class changing in Engage. First I'll go over the class types, then the classes and then I'll talk about how you're able to class change. When I go over all the classes I'll do them in order of class type so you can see which class is part of which class type. If you want to know about all the characters and which classes they start as then you can check my other video on all the characters in Engage. So beginning with the class types, there are 8 different ones. The first is Dragon. This is basically only for Lair and other Dragon classes, but what it does is it allows Engage skills and attacks to always receive some sort of bonus effect. Pretty much meaning that a Lair and whoever else has a Dragon class, we don't know everyone that well, will generally be stronger with the Emblem Rings than all the other characters. Not always, there are specific rings that will be good for specific class types or specific characters that match up well with them, but just as a general rule, that's how it will work. Classes that are part of the backup type will perform a chain attack if they're near an ally that attacks an enemy. So if they're adjacent to the attacking ally, then they will assist in the attack and deal damage. Covert type classes get double the effect from terrain, so we much better at avoiding enemies using forest and other terrain bonus tiles. The tier depth class type has access to chain guard. When you're at full HP, you can stop an attack on an adjacent ally at the cost of 20% of your HP. This is an extremely useful supportive ability. Mystical classes ignore the terrain bonuses of the foe when they use magic against them. Remember that the mystical class type is not actually all magic users, but I'll get into that when I go over all the classes. Armoured units cannot be broken. Basically, they ignore the weapon triangle's major negative effect. So if they were an axe user being attacked by a sword, normally they would be broken if they were not an armour, but as they are an armoured unit, they refuse to be broken. Cavalry just have naturally high movement and will move further than most other units. And flyers have no terrain hindrance, so they're able to just fly over all terrain pretty much. I'm sure there'll be some tiles and engage that you just can't move through, but generally flyers will be able to fly over anything. Now onto all the classes in the game. There's a tiny possibility that there's a third set of classes, like another promoted or overclass kind of thing, but no one's seen that and it seems to all be speculation, so I think it's very highly unlikely. Maybe we'll get it as DLC, like in Echoes with the overclasses. There also might be some classes in the game that we haven't seen yet that I can't put in here, obviously, because I don't know of them, but I think this is all of them. For most classes, the level cap is 20. First up is Alir's class, Dragon Child, where they can wield swords. It promotes into Divine Dragon, where they have swords and body arts. This is the only Dragon bonus type class we know. Then on to the backups. The unique classes in backups are Diamant's Lord class, which has a sword, and the promotion for it is Successor, where he wields swords and axes. Alchris shares this class, and all of the Lords share their pre-promoted class name with their sibling. Mera starts as a Sentinel, and she comes with a Lance. He promotes into a picket, which is also a lance wielding backup class. Other classes in the backup section are sword fighters, and they can promote into sword masters or heroes. Sword masters only wield swords, and heroes always wield swords, but can choose between a lance or axe variant, where they can wield one of the two alongside swords. Then there's lance fighters, which can promote into royal knights or halberdiers. Royal knights are not part of the backup section. Halberdiers are, and they wield lancers too, just like the lance fighter. Then there's of course axe fighters, which wield axes and promote into berserkers or warriors. Berserkers just continue on like axe fighters and wield axes, and warriors can wield axes and bows. Classes with the covert bonus are Alchris Lord class, which just has bows, and he can promote into Tira Delete, which also just uses bows. Then there's the Thief class, which just uses daggers and there's no promotion for it, but it doesn't cap at 20. So you should realistically go all the way to level 40 on this class. Finally is the Archer Tree. Archers can use bows and they can either promote to snipers or bow knights. Snipers are just a better archer class and just use bows as well, but bow knights are not a covert class, so I'll cover them in the cavalry section. The Chia Depp bonus group contains the unique class for Seedle, Dancer. They use body art and it, just like Thieves, there's no promotion and it won't cap at 20. We can see this in Fates where Azura also does not cap at 20 as a Dancer. Then there's Martial Monks, which is the standard healing class. They have staffs and body arts and they can promote into the Martial Master class or High Priest. The Martial Master class 
is Chi Adept and High Priest is not. Martial Masters continue on for Martial Monks and use Staffs and Body Arts. Then in the Mystical section, there's Selene's Noble Class, which wields Tomes and Swords, and she promotes to what I think is pronounced Vedame or Vedame, and she can wield Tomes, Swords and Staffs, so she gets access to healing with this class and obviously other Staffs. Then there's Mages, which can promote to Sage or Mage Knight, and Mages use Tomes. Mage Knights are not part of the Mystical class. Sages can wield tomes and staffs, so similarly to Selene's Noble class, upon promotion, staffs are gained for mages when they become sages. Then there's High Priest, which is the promotion of the Martial Monk class, and they can use tomes, staffs and body arts, so quite a nice versatile class. In the armor section we have Lance Armors, Swords Armors and Axe Armors, and they can promote to Generals or Great Knights. Generals are armoured and can wield swords, lances and axes. Great Knights are counted as an armoured and cavalry unit, but they don't retain the armoured bonus of not being broken. In the cavalry section, we have Noble for Alfred, which just wields lances, and his promotion Avenir, which allows him to wield swords and lances. Pagado's class is also a cavalry, and that is Sentinel, and he is a cavalry bow user. So he's on horseback with a bow and he promotes into Cupido or Cupido which has swords and bows so he has access to both. Then we have the Lance, Sword and Axe Cavaliers and they can promote into Paladins or Wolf Knights. Paladins can use axes, lances or swords just like the Cavalier, there's just three different types. And Wolf Knights will always have access to knives but can choose to have swords, axes or lances as well. The Lance Fighter promotion that I mentioned earlier is Royal Knight and that has access to Lances and Staffs. Mage Knight is the promotion from Mage and they have access to Tomes and one of Swords, Lances or Axes. They do lose the Mystical trait. And then finally Bow Knight which is one of the Arch promotions and always has a bow but also has access to Swords, Lances or Axes. It's quite a similar trend for cavalry units where they can choose between Swords, Lances or Axes. Great Knights buck the trend a bit, where they can wield a combination of Sword Axe, Sword Lance or Axe Lance. As I said earlier, they are a cavalry and get the cavalry bonus, but they also have the armoured tag without the armoured bonus. Now Flyers, the unique classes are for Hortensia and Ivy. They both share the Wing Tamer class at first, where they have Tomes and Staffs. However, Hortensia rides a Pegasus and Ivy rides a Wyvern. Ivy's is both a flying and dragon unit, but does not receive the dragon bonus. It's similar to Great Knights, how they have the armor tag. She has the dragon tag, but she's only getting the flyer bonus. And remember, both of these units will not get the terrain avoidance bonus when using their tomes like mysticals, so they may not seem as powerful when using tomes. They both promote into a class that wields tomes and staffs. However, Ivy's is Lindworm, and Hortensia's is Sleipnir Rider. Lindworm comes from a uh, mythology where it's a type of mystical dragon and Sleipnir is an eight-legged horse that Odin rode. The other flyers are lance flyers, sword flyers and axe flyers and these are female only. However, they promote into griffin and wyvern knights which neither are gender locked. Griffin knights can wield lance, swords and axes and always have access to staffs. So they're basically just replacing falcon knights. Wyvern Knights can pick one of three options where they can choose Swords and Axes, Lances and Axes, or Swords and Lances. Like Ivy's classes, they are both Dragon and Flying, but only keep the Flying bonus. I'm going to be talking a little slower in this segment, just so it's easier to understand all the class system stuff. Before I actually go over how class changing works, it's important for me to explain how proficiencies and weapon levels work. Unlike previous Fire Emblem games, there's no character based weapon experience level, so you don't need to train up using specific weapons to get the weapon level. Weapon levels come directly from the class you're in. For example, Berserker may have S in axes. Similarly to previous games where you might need a certain class to cap out in a weapon level, like the only class in Fates that could use swords at S is Swordmaster. But here there's no experience, you get the level of weapon from the class and that's it. There is also weapon proficiency. 
So each character will have a weapon they're proficient in to start in and they'll always be more able in that weapon. However, you can obtain proficiencies through emblem rings. I did mention it in my video about bonds level skills from the emblems recently because in the images there you can see that you can gain weapon proficiencies from having a higher bond level with the emblem rings. So to change class to a different type you need a second seal. Using a second seal requires you to have the proficiency for the class you're going to change into. So in the example of Alquist, we can see here that he changes from his Lord class to Axe Armor. He's personally proficient in bows and it's highlighted in blue, but he's also gained the Axe proficiency. So he is able to change into an Axe Armor. You can also see there that he could change from the Axe Fighter, Archer or Axe Cavalier because they all require bows or Axe proficiency. He would then be given B level in Axes when changing. This would not increase unless he changed to a different class. To promote from a base class to an advanced class using a master seal, you need to be the corresponding base class that promotes into that class. Alquist could not have promoted from his Lord class into a general because he wouldn't be the right corresponding base class. You can see here in this picture of Bucheron that he is a level 13 axe fighter and he has uh, his proficiency in axes, but he can't change into a general because it requires him to be a sword, lance, or axe armor level 10. So, yes, like all previous games, aside from kind of three houses with how its leveling worked, you need to be level 10 to use the master seal. However, second seals can be used at any time. You can use it to change from a base class to another base class at level 1, like you saw Alquist doing it but you can also change from an advanced class down to a different base class. You wouldn't be able to change from an advanced class to another advanced class because you would need the prerequisite of being that previous base class before you could change into it. That should do it guys, that basically covers everything I want to cover in this video. The only two things I haven't covered are the weapon level that each class gets and the unique abilities for each class. The video is already very long, so I didn't want to try and pack that in two, and I'm not 100% sure on all of it. I need to do more research and make sure we know about all of that before I make a video on it. But if you guys would like that, I'd happily do a shorter video on those. I hope the video was really useful, and I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks very much to SparkyPixel for being a YouTube member, and ciao bella, see you in the next one.